Lord be with you. It is a joy to see you today, and I welcome you to worship at Laverne Heights Presbyterian. A special welcome to those who are joining us online as well. Uh, the service today will be approximately 35 minutes, and we do have the restrooms to Laird open in case of emergency. So if you do need that, the door uh, back here is open. Um, I know that there is a lot of information that is out right now about masks and not masking and social distancing. And uh, we do have um, the county communicating that there will be changes on June 15th. And we're still figuring out the implications of what that will mean exactly for our worship. Uh, but until that time, certainly we would, we would request that you continue to uh, mask and do what you can to practice social distancing so that we can continue to care for all those who are in our community. Did everyone get a, a bulletin and communion cup on your way in? If you need one, if you can raise your hand. Okay. As we come before God to worship on this beautiful morning, this morning that we celebrate Pentecost, I invite you to uh, silence your heart and your mind to offer to God whatever concerns you were carrying so that you can devote yourself uh, and focus yourself on God's presence. I invite you to a moment of silence. God, our creator, earth has many languages but your gospel proclaims your love to all nations. You have created us of one love and you invite us in one heavenly tongue of love to praise you. Make us messengers of your good news that through the power of your spirit, all the world may unite in one song of praise through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Right on cue. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. The Spirit of God renews the earth. Bless the name of the Lord. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, interceding with sighs too deep for words. Please be seated and hum along to the hymn. Well. 
swept through the desert, you stung with the sand, and you gifted your people with the law. Let us confess the faith in which we were baptized. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 22. Again, it's Romans 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, beginning at verse 22. If you are uh, following along in your Bible, I invite you to open it up. If you're using an app, I encourage you to bring the reading up. And in just a moment, Erica is going to read our scripture for us. Uh, but first, will you please join me in prayer? God of power and grace, fill us with the wisdom of your word and the understanding of your spirit, 
so that we may be your church, a people with dreams and visions of your kingdom growing in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Erica. We know that the whole creation is running together and suffering labor pains up until now. And it's not only the creation. We ourselves, who have the Spirit as the first crop of the harvest, also grown inside as we wait to be adopted and for our bodies to be set free. We were saved in hope. If we see what we hope for, that isn't hope. Who hopes for what they already see? But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. In the same way, the Spirit comes to help our weaknesses. We don't know what we should pray, but the Spirit himself pleads our case with unexpressed groans. The one who searches hearts knows how the Spirit thinks, because he pleads for the saints consistent with God's will. In the beginning, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So begins the story of creation in the book of Genesis. Close your eyes and see with me the deep truth to which this story points. Imagine the darkness complete and enveloping, without end. Hear the waves crashing somewhere in the distance, far below, now to your right and now above you. Feel the cold spray that hangs in the air and the salty mist that presses ever so softly upon you. Hear the howling of the wild wind and know again the disorienting darkness that is everywhere without relief. Breathe deeply and allow your senses to settle in the dark, chaotic churning. Breathe deeply and be still in the swirling darkness. Breathe deeply and be still and know the presence of the Spirit who hovers. Like a soft whisper, gentle but sure, abiding, confident, and expectant, hopeful. In the beginning, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. These opening verses of Scripture point us to a deep truth about the Holy Spirit, Properly understood, they speak to us not only about what God's Spirit once did, but about what God's Spirit is ever doing within creation on creation's behalf. In other words, the story of the Spirit should not be understood as beginning with the words, once upon a time, but instead with the words, yesterday, today, and forever and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Yesterday, the Spirit of God hovered over the darkness, listening for the word of the Father. And the Spirit heard God speak, and so the Spirit of God hovered over the dawning light, and the Spirit of God hovered over waking creation as it sounded its morning cry. Today, the Spirit hovers over the grass of the valley, the trees of the forest, and the shale of the mountains. The Spirit hovers over the wildflowers and the bees that float between them, the sparrow and the hawk as they sit upon the wind, the fishes in the ocean as they swarm and turn and gulp at the sea. The Spirit hovers over the badger as she bears her teeth and the deer as he raises his bony crown and the cat as she struts along the ledge just to show she can. And the Spirit hovers over every human heart and every human body. 
yesterday, today, and forever, the Spirit hovers over creation, abiding in hopeful love. It is this consistent presence of the Spirit that makes each part of creation a spoken word of God. Have you ever heard someone say that they feel so close to God in creation? Perhaps you have said that. The hovering of the Spirit is the reason, the logic beneath this human proclamation that we find the presence of God in creation. Lucy Shaw, one of my favorite poets, captures the sentiment of God's presence in creation beautifully in her poem, Every Creature is a Word of God. The poem is a reflection on a statement by the 13th century German theologian Meister Eckhart. Listen and enter the world of her words. Expectant, we process into the pine forest with its architectural trees. No candles, but between twigs, patches of god light fall at our feet. In this arboreal cathedral, we are supplicants for grace, worshipers of viridian words being spoken into the air every hour like music. Silence, like a stilled bell. This is also a word. Incense lifts from pine needles underfoot. And look there, an ant with his thready waist, blessing God that he is small and black and has a crumb to carry. Two squirrels fleet as furred angels chase and chatter. We listen for a bird choir, something a cappella. But in a small pond's lap, a frog with gold eyes coughs twice in praise of water threaded with reeds gleaming like a sung psalm. It is a beautiful poem, and it reminds me of what the old hymn says, For the beauty of the earth, Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. But of course, praise is not our sole experience of creation. We also experience creation as a place of suffering. It raises questions about how to reconcile God's clear presence with the suffering we also encounter. Taken seriously, the suffering leads to a lurking question, where is God in creation's suffering? The Apostle Paul knew the weight of this question, and the church he loved knew the weight of this question. It is for the, this reason that he wrote today's verses in Romans. Here is an important truth, beloved of God, acknowledging the question and reality of suffering in creation in our own lives and in the life of the created order is not unfaithful. When you see the suffering of the world, your eyes are beholding the same suffering the apostle saw and the same suffering the church has seen throughout the ages. More than that, you are beholding the same suffering God the Father saw that stirred his action for creation's redemption. It is because of this suffering that God made a promise to the whole of creation. And please hear this, God did make a promise to the whole of creation and not only to human beings. Remember the words God spoke to Noah as he brought his family and the animals from the ark. God said, I now establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature on earth. Or consider the famous verse, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. The Greek word translated world is cosmos, from which we also get our word cosmos. God so loved the cosmos that he gave his only son. There is suffering within creation and God sees it. In our own day, it is easy for us to see the suffering in connection to what is often called the current ecological crisis. Certainly this suffering is included, but I also think we need to 
remind ourselves that creation's suffering runs deeper. If we could solve the current crisis, then most certainly we should work and live in ways that bear witness to God's love for creation, the whole of creation, ways that defy the dominant view in our culture that creation is reducible to a natural resource for human use and consumption. But even if we could solve the current crisis, still we would not have solved the suffering of creation. In fact, creation's suffering defies purely human solutions. This may sound initially like bad news, but only if we imagine that human solutions are creation's greatest hope, and only if we have not listened deeply to the words of the apostle in our reading. In the midst of creation's suffering, the true good news is this, that the Holy Spirit abides. The Holy Spirit is still hovering, and the hovering spirit is not aloof. Instead, it is a hovering that enters the very depths of creation's experience, a hovering that reaches down into the wordless groanings of creation, into the place where cries and sobs have taken the place of coherence. This is the truth Paul wants us to see. The Spirit abides with creation and groans with creation, entering into pure, pure and true sympathy with creation. And from the place of groaning, the Spirit cries out in prayer to the Father on creation's behalf. The Spirit remembers the promise of God to creation, and the Spirit prays for the coming of God's kingdom. This would all be remarkable enough, but the truth is even more profound. Not only does the Spirit enter creation's suffering and pray out of creation's suffering, but the Spirit is also present as a midwife longing to see the final birth of creation in God's beautifully spoken word. The hovering spirit of God is present, prayerful, and purposeful. This is to the glory of God. The spirit is with creation in its suffering. The spirit is with the whole of creation. The spirit is in a profound way present with the wind that blows, the grass that grows, and every creature, great and small. Our dog, Abby, got hold of a squirrel the other day. This squirrel had chirped at Abby for years, and for years, Abby would stand underneath and bark up at the squirrel. It has all been harmless, but the other day, the squirrel slipped and fell from the palm tree to which it clung. I would never have imagined a squirrel slipping, though I do not know why. People fall, and sometimes those falls bring cascading consequences. Well, the squirrel slipped and fell as Abby stood below, and by the time we got hold of Abby, it became apparent that the squirrel would not survive. It was a strange experience. I did tend to the squirrel, trying to determine whether it might be saved, and Right away, it became apparent it could not. And then I had the strange awareness that as it grasped desperately at life, that my own presence, born of some sort of creaturely solidarity, was causing the poor thing only more fear and discomfort. And so I stepped away so that my presence would not be an added burden as the squirrel lay dying. I was sad, and I'll say it seems strange to step away from any living thing to let it die alone. But in that moment, I was struck, and that is what the thought felt like, like being struck with the realization that that small squirrel was not alone as it died. The Spirit of God was present. If that sort of language sounds shocking in our ears, it is perhaps because we have not pondered deeply enough the words of Jesus who said, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. Beloved of God, there is a deep suffering within creation. It is present in forests, deserts, and mountains, and in creatures great and small. 
It is present in human beings, both young and old, in homes, hospitals, and back alleys. But thanks be to God, wherever the suffering is present, there is also the hovering spirit of God, present in creation's deepest groanings, crying out to God and bringing to birth the kingdom that is to come. And we know the kingdom shall come, for Jesus Christ is risen from the grave, the firstborn of God's new creation. Friends, though creation groans in labor pains, take heart and remember that God's new day is already dawning. This is the hope we bear into a suffering world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And join me now in the call to confession and prayer of confession. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. Now, a moment of silent confession. Lord, remind us of your mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, in your loving kindness. In your great compassion, cleanse us from sin. Do not cast us away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore us to the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Amen. And now, friends, hear the assurance of pardon. Beloved of God, hear the good news. Who in all creation is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone and a new life in God has begun. Remember the promise of God sealed by the Holy Spirit in our baptism and know that in Jesus Christ you are forgiven. Let all God's people say, Alleluia, Amen. Long for to be overcome by 
your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. And there's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare, you're our living hope, your presence, Lord. Now I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free. My shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence. become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness oh. When Jesus said to his disciples, follow me, he invited them into a world where the grace and the love of God abound. And as he speaks those same words to us, he offers the same invitation, follow me and enter the kingdom where the grace and love of God abound. This morning I invite you to notice the grass beneath you the blue sky above you, the flowers that are blooming, the mountains behind us, to feel the warmth of the sun and to know the goodness of God and to give thanks. And at the same time, to know wherever in your life you carry places of suffering, whether in your life or the life of those you love or the life of the world, in those places of suffering, 
the same good God is present, groaning out and praying with your spirit. To enter into discipleship is to enter into the knowledge that nothing exists in the whole of creation apart from the love and grace of God in Jesus Christ. As we come together around this table that Christ has set in the world for us, his children, let us pray together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God. Your spirit hovered over the waters and brought forth all creation. You breathed into us the breath of life and set us on the earth to praise and serve you. Therefore, in praise, we join our voices with the heavenly choirs and the faithful of every time and place who say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior and Lord. By your spirit, you named him beloved and empowered him to serve the poor, proclaim freedom from sin's bondage, and to befriend the friendless and the outcast. When he breathed his last upon a cross, you raised him from the tomb, breaking the power of death and opening the way to eternal life. We remember with thanksgiving the Lord's meal with his disciples in which he took the bread and blessed it, broke it open and gave it to them saying, this is my body, take and eat, remembering me. We remember how he also took a cup saying, this is the new covenant in my blood, drink of it all of you and remember me. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this cup from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Church, let us join together according to Christ's commandments. We remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be for us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. Lord, as we gather around these, your gifts to us, we are reminded that you have set your table in the midst of a needy world. And so we offer our prayers to you. Especially this day, we pray for the church in Asia and the Middle East. We pray especially for the Roman Catholic Church. We pray for those who care for creation, for those who work for the benefit of others, for those who cannot work this day, and for all who seek wisdom and understanding to live according to our faith. We pray for victims of violence or warfare, for those who are hungry and thirsty, for those who share what they have with others, and for the healing of those who are sick. We pray for those known only to you and for those we love, those we name before you now. I invite you to speak aloud the name of those for whom you would like prayer. Lord, keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved of God, Jesus Christ is the true bread from heaven who gives his life for the life of the world. When we break the bread, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? And when we give thanks over the cup, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? Beloved of God, these are holy gifts for holy people. Yet who is holy? Only one is holy. Jesus Christ is holy. Come then, in Jesus Christ, everything is made ready. I invite you to take uh, your communion kit and to open the bread side first and to take it when you are ready as a sign of your individual faith in Christ. And then I invite you to open the juice side and to hold it, and we will take it together as a sign of our unity. Beloved of God, the blood of Christ shed for the redemption of all creation. Let us pray. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, uh, as we prepare to head out into this day, into this week, into this month, and into this year, as we prepare to transition from this time of worship to worship that we will live throughout this week, I invite Erica to lead us in our prayer for reconciliation. Holy God, the Bible, the Bible says, says that, that you are love. While we love some more than others, you exist as love equally for everyone. We thank you that the world is filled with people who are different and unique. This makes our world interesting, enjoyable, and a reflection of your own uniqueness. Help us to learn from others and consider their perspectives and histories so that we aren't trapped in our own. Help us to recognize the strengths and values of others and how you are using their gifts in the world. And help us to come to know new people that we don't care about and restore old relationships that have been pulled apart. Transform us more and more to see clearly with your eyes, to listen with your ears, and to love as you love, that we might know what is good in the world and what needs to be fixed, even if it is us that needs to be fixed. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to stand to receive the blessing. Beloved of God, as you go now, may the triune God go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you in obedient ministry, 
above you to watch over you, beneath you to uphold you, within you to give you faith, hope, and love, and before you to show you the way. And let all God's people say, Alleluia, Amen. The Lord be with you.